there was a, a fist fight, yeah, that started in the street and moved its way into the driveway <laughs> there. So, and I was part of, uh, I guess, I didn't realize Bouncer was in the job description, but I, I helped. <laughs> I want to know the story behind it. So, you see that sign right there? That is Eric's bandit sign that these people stole. We see you. They have, they have my bandit sign in the back of their truck. That's so funny. Weird. John Fedger here. I'm driving up to right now, about to meet active mobile home investor Eric. Uh, we're going to tour some of the properties that he's worked on, some of his investment properties. Also, it's kind of cool. We're going to walk through a property. I believe he's being shown by a park manager a couple doors down from another investment mobile home that he already owns. Uh, is he going to purchase this mobile home that he's looking at today? Uh, maybe, maybe not. Time will tell uh, for him moving forward. Uh, but let's go ahead and spend a day with him, check out what he's doing. Older home, but the park is really decent. There's not many homes here. It's 100% occupied, and when homes go up for sale here, they go really fast. So definitely an older home, but because of the inventory that's not here, um, this one definitely has some potential. Two bedroom, one bath to be fixed up. Well, I should have pulled up in here, but I wasn't sure if there was space or not. So. What's the address on here? Nine or what? trying to locate the hot water heater. Also an area for a washer and dryer. Uh, definitely no washer and dryer, but even the hot water heater or the furnace are kind of missing. I, this area should be something. There's no hole up here where the furnace vent would go, but uh, having trouble locating. Oh, here's some sort of heater. But uh, no furnace. Got it, it has a 200 amp service, so assuming that's correct. Uh, should be able it's to put in a hot water heater and furnace. Yeah. We cannot find it anywhere in here. It's not in the bag. It's look not this in the floor mask. tiling on the wall. It doesn't look too bad, actually. That's why I thought too, but I could I wanted to interrupt this video really quickly to uh, say a couple things. Uh, you may be walking or watching this video, walking through the mobile home to say, John, this is an older, uh, like kind of functionally obsolete mobile home. You know, why would I want to invest in this mobile home? Uh, you know, when there's other prob mobile homes out there for, for better opportunity. Well, there's a couple of reasons. Number one is that Eric was turned on to this mobile home by the park manager who already likes Eric. Eric's already involved in that park, cleaning up homes and reselling them. Um, and this one can be no different. We want to be a one-stop shop for most park managers. If they have a property, we want to be interested or at least show interest and go take a look at the property and really try to give it our all if we can invest in it. Now, this is an older a smaller 12 foot wide by 48 foot long mobile home that I will agree with you it's not brand new by any stretch of the imagination. It does need work when it's cleaned up and repaired. It has another 10, 20 years left in it for sure, if not longer. So there is a value to be created with a home like this, um, even in the condition that it's in, um, because Eric's gonna get it for little to no money. Um, and he's already working in that park. So we want to be helpful to the manager. The low supply means that the demand for this home will be substantial when it is fixed up. And it is a two bedroom, uh, one bathroom mobile home that has, uh, yeah, it needs some work, but it's, it's a decent home. So anyway, I just kind of wanted to mention that uh, as to why, you know, why we're looking at this home. Um, just because it's obviously not the newest, nicest mobile home out there. Um, in some areas, you know, people watching might say, oh, it needs to be just pulled out of there and condemned. And it's got more life left in it, that's for sure. Um, and the rest of the, the park is sort of comparable. There's some nicer, newer homes, but mostly it's kind of older homes that have been taken care of and loved by people that are in them. Uh, so I hope that that made sense. Now let's go back to the video. We're actually in the same park. We're gonna pick up the video sitting in Eric's truck right outside of a property that he's holding for uh, payments. We're back in the truck now. Um, this one you have purchased and you've, you're, you've sold it. Correct. On payments. Correct. Um, well, is this a two, a two bedroom? Yes, it is a, a two bedroom, one bathroom. Um, it's originally in 1970, but it's been extensively remodeled. Uh, by you or by the people that? By the people, previous owners. Cool. Two previous owners. Um, the one of the biggest problems with this one when you got it was the roof. And Correct. you had it, yeah, well, how did you fix the roof issue? Okay, well, um, I did a bunch of research and there's a couple options. This is the old metal roofs. 
uh -huh. um, that are common with, with homes, you know, the older single wides and double wides. Um, and my best option that I found was this product called Roof Wrap. And they have a website, roofwrap.com, and I'm not affiliated, but that's just what I use. Uh, so I guess I can plug it. And it was just a really random stroke of luck. You can kind of see it hanging over. It's just that wrap, the darker piece, and then that piece of metal flashing is securing it. It's just, it's just, it's rubber? Correct. Okay. It's actually, I'm told, the same type of rubber they use for inner tubes in, in tires, like heavy duty tires. So it's quite a thick, it's called EPDM rubber membrane beautiful huge shed back there too yes a very large shed and even from the outside you can't see how big it is so um, a really really large shed that was almost entirely finished uh, as well um, with even insulated so so that rubber coats or no the rubber you just put on the entire roof it's a big long sheet correct and uh, you can purchase it in widths that are one foot wider than the home so that was a 12 foot wide home and you purchase a 13 foot width and if there was no pop out or tip out you would just roll it out over the roof and put it directly over top you don't have to do any prep work uh, depending here there's no high wind hurricane risk so no further prep was necessary if there's areas with a higher wind load you you would there's a way to glue it down uh, make it more secure and um, and basically for the roof penetrations you just you cut a hole and it slides right over because it's rubber and then you would put a proper um, like a silicone boot or something on top of that and seal it correctly. Me and Eric are having lunch right now at some awesome taco bus. You could walk in the front and then there's like a station to cook right there. So I actually have a business partner and um, so some deals we do independently but sometimes it's good to partner with other investors. Nice. So this is a woman that, and we'll see the home later today, uh, she's a partner on that home. Okay. It's, it's a home that uh, is, is a higher price point than I would normally go into, but it, it still makes sense to do as a deal. The numbers made sense. So we partnered up and, and we each brought things to the table. She just came back from doing a walkthrough of a mobile home on land um, in a sort of a rural area. And she was pretty excited. She says it's looking good. And her thought was to um, to actually, it has an old mobile home and she was going to you know, take that away or get rid of it and put a brand new one on because it's not financeable currently. And, sh and her exit strategy is, is something that can be financed. Um, and I actually got a lead last week of a, a 98 double wide that needs to be moved. And we kind of put two and two yes. together on the phone. So on Monday, in a couple of days, I'm, I'm doing a walkthrough of a, of a 98 32 double wide, a big one, like 1700 square foot. Oh wow. And typically you would have to Heck try to yes. find a park or something, but this could be a good home to replace the old 70s one that's there already. Absolutely. Uh, apparently the one that's there is in a really bad state. And so, and this one that I'm going to look at is apparently very livable and nice. So should we pause it? And just yeah, definitely. Get some, get some stuff to put on oh yeah, there? we're going to get some stuff and eat this. I sneaked into Eric's office. How cool is this? Discipline absolutely equals freedom. That's so cool. So these are just a couple things I use for staging. Um, some of the homes um, I, I stage, and this is a, a ficus tree, just okay. just like the table um, picture, picture, and and the plant. That's really it's pretty minor. It's some shower curtains, uh, some towels, some basic things, and it works really well. Um, and it makes the home look really nice when it's ready. Do you ever have people kind of like, oh no, I want to keep this? <laughs> I have <laughs> had people that liked liked the uh, that picture. Yeah, picture, seriously, that is which nice. I just got off Craigslist. I mean, and you don't have to spend a lot on this. Like, get it off Craigslist. This I got for free. Uh, you don't have to go overboard. You don't have to do the entire home, but. Great tip. Yeah, I, I think it helps, yeah. Sitting here, sitting here in Eric's backyard, we're going like everywhere today. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's the grand tour today. <laughs> I, f I first found mobile home investing through Bigger Pockets, spending time on there. I, I wanted to be a real estate investor, but I was struggling to do it with the amount of money I had in, in my home market. And I was getting frustrated and I found mobile home investing and I looked into it a little bit where I was and it, it didn't seem viable to me. There's very few mobile homes where I lived. Um, the market really wasn't amenable. And so I started doing some research and I, I made the decision um, one day to, to just go for it. And that was uh, a year ago in August. And it was, it was a pretty big decision. Um, and then I, I also did some research and not too far away, but I had to move towns to move to a, a, a better market. So oh. I moved here 
where there is there's probably 200 mobile home parks in this county so it was a very strategic decision awesome and uh, and i know very few people can kind of do that because i'm at a point in my life where i don't have you know a family to take care of Fine. i was able to to quit my job but it was still a, it was a huge leap i left my family and friends and i came here to really see if i could do it that was the main thing you know can i do this if not you know i was going to slink back home with my tail between my legs and go back to my career but i thought i'd give it my best shot well, for it for a couple months. You yeah. did, and you're being really modest because that was the, I remember that point blank from the very first time that we talked, you know, come hell or high water, like I'm giving this my all. You gave yourself every opportunity. You were talking to people, but then you didn't have traction. And on your first deal in May, since then, it's been about one, one deal a month? Approximately, yeah. So uh, it's been five months now since my first deal. Okay. And um, now I'm on my fifth flip currently happening which we'll see today and I've done two wholesale deals so two legitimate wholesale deals yeah and then the three others were uh, two cash two cash and one on payments right on okay so then the payment one uh, what does that one look like so the payment was my second flip and I actually purchased the home for eight hundred dollars it was one I was a little bit afraid of at first but it actually wasn't that much work once I looked beneath the surface um, all in cost was four grand okay and uh, the sale price was five grand down and 300 a month for, four, for three and a half years. Oh, right on. So, so you then more than you made a profit at the move in? Small profit at the move in and cash flow for three and a half years. It was the home, it was my second deal, and it needed a lot of work both to the yard that the park wanted. They didn't care about the inside, but they cared about the exterior appearance. That, that's so, that one with the, uh, we were showing like the, the new roof. The new yeah. roof, yeah. yeah, or just the roof covering, yeah. Yeah, and the yard was, it was just an absolute mess when I got it, and uh, and so she came with, had a whole checklist of things that the, the park wanted done after they did their own walk around the exterior. Oh, that was her. Yeah, so oh, okay. I did my best to complete everything within reason on, on that that I could and, and did the best I could, and I had to come out of pocket a little bit more money to get some of those things done, mm -hmm. but um, it, it wasn't significant, and, uh, and it helps out because here she is, there's another home available. Right. She's calling me to... To have a look and, and no. you know I'm getting the first crack at it which is amazing let's talk about that one so it was it was a 1960 something only a two-bedroom yeah um, it was a very interesting home what are your thoughts on that one on whether I would do that as a deal uh, yeah if you you know <laughs> at this point and this, um, this is the first time that you saw it today right yeah okay so yes. we're kind of I'm kind of hitting you with some yeah it, what it really depends what the park wants if they want money for it that is more work than the ones that I have done to date. Okay. You know, so I haven't done anything that, that is that extensive. Um, my very gut reaction is it's a pass okay. just because I know there are easier deals out there. And right now I almost have well a, ba a backlog of, of walkthroughs I need to do. <laughs> so so there's that. other stuff I have to follow up. So um, there could be very well be much easier ones. But having said that, um, I have to talk to the park. Maybe it's something um, if they're okay, you know, we... Oftentimes you sell sort of ones that still need some work, mm -hmm. but with air, all the essentials working. So it could be something that we get clean and presentable. There's definitely, the roof's good, it's dry. Mm -hmm. You know, it has been a home and it can be a good home for someone, I think so. but it's gonna take a certain type of buyer that is perhaps gonna wanna complete all the finishing touches. So, I mean, with my experience, that's something that it's older than what I've done, it's smaller than what I've done, and it needs more work than what I've done. And I know there's ones that are, are you know, easier, less work out there well said right now uh so, so so would it be profitable yes but is it the is it worth the time and effort maybe i'm i'm on the fence right now so just parked at one of uh, eric's empty properties at the moment check out this community here uh, all the homes are not all of them but a lot of them are kind of facing the front you have like the long part facing this way which is cool um, because you don't see that often. This looks more like a residential street. It does, yeah. A... And that's part of the appeal to people. Is and this is your, this is your place. This is our project. Do yes. you mind talking about uh, the numbers, or can sure. we go inside? Yeah, absolutely. Ooh, this thing's huge. Uh, it's nice. almost fifteen hundred square foot, but I think I haven't measured it. It might be bigger. It feels bigger <laughs> to me. Beautiful windows. What what year is this? This is a two thousand one. Uh, it's a three bedroom, two bathroom. This is more like a traditional house flip where wow. we had paint and carpet done. Um, oh, it smells great. Yeah, it smells like new carpet. <laughs>
Smells like money. <laughs> this is incredible. So yeah, what are the numbers? How how how'd you get into it? So uh, wow. this is a partnership, a joint venture partnership. Okay. Uh, there's three partners involved. Cool. So the nice thing was on this one, I didn't have to come out of pocket any money. Didn't come out any money. But using you know the skills that I bring to the table. Very particular set of skills. And uh, they purchased it for twenty five thousand from a bank. It was a repo. And. Uh, and our budget for the rehab is uh, 10000 Okay. So we're looking to be into it for anywhere from thirty three to 36000 And we're going to put on the market at 60000 And we're confident we can get between fifty and 60000 Yes. Yeah. That's excellent. Yeah. So uh, it's split three ways. That, that works out to somewhere between anywhere from five to eight grand each. Who originally found, found the deal? Um, well, it's uh, both myself and my partner are both on the buyers list of this bank. Okay. And I send out monthly emails. So then, what was the thought process that you didn't want to do this by yourself? Uh, I didn't have enough capital. Okay. Yeah, didn't have the funds to. That was but, makes perfect um, sense. And what's that twenty-five thousand that my partner decided was worth doing the deal? I personally wouldn't have paid that much. I think if I did have the funds, I would have been into it maybe. I would have liked to have been into it for 15 to 20 tops, 15 to 17,000. You feel that the bank would have? I don't think they would have accepted that though. Uh, I did bid, I think 13,000 on it a month previous and it was not accepted. As a third of an acre size lot, which is a big. Very big, what's the lot rent? It's uh, it's around fifty dollars below average at. 40. <laughs> yeah. And for this huge lot. Yeah. Nice. When do you plan on getting it uh, all done? I mean, it looks like you don't have too much more. We're to almost there. Yeah. yeah. There's just some finishing touches. Hopefully, a couple more days, and yeah, early next on. week we'll have it on the market. Heck yeah! Congratulations. So, thanks. What are your goals for the rest of the year? My goals are to continue the current pace of one deal per month. Cool. Um, I would like to. Uh, even try to accelerate that a little bit, maybe one and a half to two per month. And that was my goal from the outset was one per month. And uh, there was a time where I thought this is impossible, but it, it just took a while and it really does build momentum when you start to establish yourself. And all of a sudden now I can I kind of know what I'm doing now. It, it took a, a while and I don't need to call yourself as much for advice, but I still, you know, it still helps a lot. Of course. Um, but at first I was calling, you know, almost every day. What about this deal? What about this? You do get competent. It just takes some time and practice. And you're able to sell a lot. Well, most of what you sold is, are, has been for cash. Correct. Uh, the market that I'm in is, is a hotter market, I guess, yeah. in terms of the country. There's very good demand. And that was also a strategic decision uh, on my part. I need to, I didn't start with a huge amount, but enough. And it's helped me build up my capital a bit to where um, I plan to do more on payments because you can make more on payments. Um, but I've left a bit on the table by doing a couple cash deals to help build up my capital. My goodness, but from where you came from, I mean, the, the, the version of you now that I'm hearing is so much different than, and even at that mastermind group in Phoenix, like just the, the, the confidence level that you had there was almost more of a, I hear people doing it and I see that it's possible, but you don't, you know, you didn't do it. And I, so the confidence that you have now and just how you're talking so matter of factly and that's, yeah. that's so cool. It, uh, it's just, yeah, you become, you, you just build up that knowledge, but it, it, it takes practice. And like I said, I would have told myself, just try to get a hundred sellers to say no, that would have been great practice. I, need, <laughs> I needed the practice and I wasn't giving myself that chance by being uh, too timid, I guess. Well, some of those people that have said no to you, have they, have they ever called you back to, uh, so that's something I still need to, I definitely don't have everything figured out. I, I know I'm, I'm making good progress, but I need to be better at follow up. Okay. Uh, I'm not Huge. the best, yeah. but I have had people call me. My second wholesale was someone who did call me back and, and it turned into a wholesale deal instead of, uh, you know, ourselves purchasing the home. So the seller saw the value that we could provide and use our expertise in, in marketing it and getting his home sold. So he actually approached us, um, called back. And awesome. Then, yeah. And then the one, the second deal I got for 800, that one was due to follow up. That was, that was follow up on my part. So, Excellent. Yeah. Good job. Yeah, I've, we've fixed property. them before. Um, maybe not to the extent of this one though. That's why. So. Two bedroom, one bath. Yeah, it's two bedroom, one bath. Potentially pick up for free with a lot of free lot rent. But it's going to need a whole overhaul, okay. six or seven thousand. 
Nice to meet you. I love how there can be so many different kinds of mobile homes. Check out this one. It's just a single wide. We're in a completely uh, different park than we were just at, obviously. Looks like a washer and dryer station there. It's tough to see, but brand new shingle roof. Eric was telling me he paid about two grand to get all those um, shingles redone and some of the uh, lumber underneath the shingles. Um, great looking home. Now this one's already sold, right? It is you already purchased sold. it. Yep, it's not no, even let's pending. Go inside. It's, this is uh, awesome. They it's got, not even pending. They got they got approved yesterday. And if that, if, if I wasn't here, if we weren't making this video, then uh, it would be if, if people would be moving in. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That is real cool. So lets more light in. It's yeah. Clear. Keeps this area dry. So we redid these porches, restained them. We redid this entryway. Uh, carpets didn't put new ones, but got them stretched. Take and, our shoes and shampooed. Oh yeah, we can move our shoes here. Okay. Um, awesome. You want free shingle? Talking about the uh, numbers. Sure. This uh, is so cool. So purchase Smells price. Good. Yeah. Purchase price was sixty five hundred with fifty percent down and fifty percent in six months. Ah, that's the one. Yes. And um, and that helped because uh, I didn't have enough money to buy it and, the, and do the repairs. Mm -hmm. So I used that money to do the repairs and. Um, so we are actually, I overspent Smart. on this one. Uh, I'm going to be all in for 12,000. Okay. Um, where did you, where did that, where did the extra expenses come from? Where do you feel like you overspent on the acquisition price, on the rehab? On the rehab. I did some things I didn't need to. Um, I held it a bit longer because I was kind of stretched a little thin. Um, I, I painted a couple of the bedrooms that I didn't need to paint. Okay. <laughs> um, why did you do that? What was your mind, their thought, your thought process I there? I know the colors were really ugly and I just thought it would add to the home and I didn't realize how long it would take. Good looking property. And the uh, selling price? Is uh, 20,000 cash. Nice. Yeah. So it's still, and, and one month end to end. Uh, oh, good. Yeah. How many people did it take to get through this to, for them to they say, were, I want it? They were the, probably the fourth, third or fourth people that walked into the home. And I had talked to maybe another three or four on the phone. Talked so, to, okay. So I talked awesome. to maybe half a dozen to eight people. But he had, had three people walk in, into the home and they were the third people that walked through. When you're selling homes, the, you show a video Correct. before people come and see this. So yes. They, okay, so they know all about it. So before so before they've even shown up, they, have, they know what the park qualification criteria are. They've seen p several pictures and they've had a walkthrough video. So I, I send an email reply with a link. Nice. And, uh, and then if they have any questions at the bottom of my email is my phone number. Perfect. So the people calling me and the people showing up to walk through are generally already quite interested because they know, <laughs> yeah. they've know everything they need to know about it and, uh, and they've seen a whole video walkthrough. So now they're confirming what their thoughts are. This is really nice. I mean, just and the simple. All the, appliances, all the appliances are here, newer, they work. Um, so it was, um, it was a pretty simple flip. Um, yeah, and then the back deck, we, we, we did that as well, so it looks nice. Awesome. Great job, Eric. And, um, and if we had sold on payments instead of cash, um, we could have, we left, yeah, several thousand on the table. Definitely. Because um, there was, there was, after their offer, there was two, no, three people that had 10 grand to put down, and then monthly payments. Um, depending on yeah, between three and four hundred dollars a month. What, did you do? You have any remorse there? I, you know, I don't because at this point, I do need the the, yeah. the capital to hey. to grow and keep going. Probably. My thoughts are get the cash now because that that extra cash now yep. will allow me to do an extra deal now that I, I can sell in payments. Absolutely, like that one we just were through. Correct. I mean, yeah, that's so, awesome. And uh, and also with these nicer, newer, hot, like sort of higher end, I would say, manufactured mobile homes, um, that's where you can get the cash buyers. People will come out of pocket for a, a very like a good product, good a newer home, move-in ready. Um, I know I'm going to get some fixer uppers down the road, some handyman specials, and those are the ones I'm going to want to sell on payments. <laughs> So still in this amazing home, and this just happened a couple days ago. Yeah. I have not even been privy to what was going on, but literally outside where your truck is, yeah. that there was a, uh, a 
It fist started, fight? There was a fist fight, yeah, that started in the street and moved its way into the drive <laughs> there. So, and I was part of, uh, I guess, I didn't realize Bouncer was in the job description, but I helped with that. Um, so, uh, yeah. what it was is we hired our painters to, to paint this home, and it looks great now, but I've had someone coming in and doing touch-ups. I called this painter uh, based on, they had a bandit sign actually, and, okay. and they talked a good game, and I got two quotes, and they were the lower quotes, so they were the cheaper work, and, and he talked a really good game, and uh, so I went with him. I didn't check any references whatsoever. Um, not sure with his previous work. Um, and then um, I, I had a written bid from him, but I didn't really do a, a correct contract with the timeline either. Okay. So it, uh, it ended up being delayed, and what was supposed to be done one day was pushed off for five days later, and then we had carpet guys scheduled to come in, and all of a sudden, you can't be painting when you have brand new carpet. Right. So, um, so I came out to do the, the final inspection, and sure enough, it was, you know, at that point, still maybe 85%, 90% done. And I was kind of disappointed. Some things were a mess. Uh, the, there's paint spilled all over this floor. And Just two days ago? Uh, no, this was la uh, last week. Okay. Or, yeah, early last week. So um, they just, they made a mess. They were not professionals, um, I would say. The job was, parts of it I was happy with, but it was just um, other parts were very sloppy, rushed. Um, and then I, I got here and I was looking through it, and that morning the painter who I hired was not answering his phone. And then all of a sudden this fellow came in, and I recognized him because when I was walking through previously I saw him painting, and it was a oh, worker okay. that the painter I had hired, he hired this man. Subcontract. And they had a verbal agreement, you know, that he was going to pay him X amount per day for his work, and this guy was very upset. I guess he hadn't been paid what he was told, and, and the, the painter who had hired him, that man was telling him that I hadn't paid oh, the painter. You for he was it. blaming me saying I'm not I'm hold, I'm withholding money and that you know I'm complaining the job is, is sloppy and terrible. And um, anyways he was basically lying to this guy he didn't yeah. want to pay him. So I had I had advanced most of the money for the work that was completed, you know, but I didn't give a full payment. And that was a good thing because um, yeah you should always you know, withhold some until the job is 100% done. And this guy was threatening to put a lien on the home, uh, a mechanics lien. Yeah. And um, anyways, it ended up working out to, I, he had agreed to finish the work that was left for the amount of money that I withheld because the other guy at that point was fired. He, he had blown deadlines repeatedly and it would just left everything in a mess with, with only, you know, one day before the carpet guys came. So this guy was here finishing and then, and the painter I had hired came to pick up the rest of his tools and then as soon as the two saw each other, they just went at it in the street. They were, oh my they were at each other just... Did the neighbor see or the oh, park yes. manager? So, or? Yes, uh, the neighbor was looking out her window oh, and, no. you know, of course we want to make a good impression. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to be bringing riffraff into the neighborhood. So this fellow that I hadn't hired, but, but this very unprofessional painter had hired. Agree, was, yes. Um, so they were fighting in the street and, and uh, myself and another fellow came to break it up and one was try trying to choke the other guy and the other one was punching him in the head and Gosh. we managed to get them separated and at least, you know, get away from each other so that I was able to sort things out with one fellow. You got yeah. a, or like a hold harm or like a release? Yes, so forward. I did get, yeah, so I got release of a lien after, you know, everything was done and sorted and, and it did end up costing us a bit more money um, than... Uh, you know, at the end of the day, if, if I had done my homework, I could have prevented that. Or if I had, you know, gone with someone a bit more professional, that might have cost a bit more with their bid. But actually, in the long run, uh, I didn't save any money at all. Because then I had to hire someone to come in and finish all the touch-ups.